Today, we are finally getting our hands on something we've been wanting for a long, long time. Haley. Just kidding, we're gonna grind for another galaxy soul so we can forge our galaxy hammer into the infinity gavel. Much more exciting. But before we can do that, we'll have to plant some summer seeds since we are now in the month of summer. And speaking of that, welcome back to summer year 2, days 1 and 2 of the Stardew Valley min-max and 100% perfection guide. Of course, we'll mainly fill our farm with starfruit seeds, but we also want to pick up a variety of summer seeds to plant since we'll need other crops to cook recipes for the cook everything perfection goal. But before we even start planting, we'll need to make a trip to Ginger Island to pick up a new key challenge and then head back to town to actually buy the seeds. Let's go ahead and get started with day one, a super luck day, and we quickly take care of farm chores and grab a whole bunch of gift items because, well, you'll see soon. After making sure we have everything we need, we warp to the beach and travel to Ginger Island. Today is Monday, which means a new key challenge is available, but before we head over there, we will quickly clear the weeds on the island farm, since they do appear on the first day of each season, and we don't want them destroying our starfruit crops. We also collect the fruit tree bananas and mangoes and chop a few trees along the way. I was a little disappointed when I arrived at the Golden Walnut Room and found Key's kindness as the best option once again, since this challenge does take quite a bit of time to go all over the map to give NPCs gifts. Of course, we still have a few NPCs left to level up friendship with, but not that many, so we will have to give out quite a few gifts to NPCs we already have maximum friendship with. It would be very nice to get the Skull Cavern Invasion Challenge again, since I believe the upgraded Skull Cavern is the best way to gain lots of radioactive ore, which would be nice to get a bunch for Hyper Speed Grow and other cool stuff. But anyway, one of those who we still need quite a few hearts with is Leo, so of course while we're at the island we stop at his hut and give him a duck feather. After this, we head back to the valley and give Willie a sea cucumber, then into Elliot's cabin, where he definitely heard a center but proceeds to play the piano anyway, probably trying to impress us, but after he's finished we get a few dialogue options here, although none of them have any impact on friendship. This cutscene is Elliot's six heart event, activated when entering his home while he is there. He vents to us about how hard it is to write his book, and he claims the only recreation he allows himself is an occasional tune, but he's not fooling anyone. We all see him over at that Stardrop Saloon. We make our way to the Special Orders Board and select the Crop Order Quest, since both won't get us anything good, and I plan to plant some hot peppers anyway. The last Special Order we really need is Caroline's Island Ingredients for the Solar Panel Recipe, so hopefully we can get that soon. After this, we give gifts to Kent and Sam, then enter Haley's house to be met with her Ten Heart event, activated in her home while she is there. We enter Haley's dark room and are given a few dialogue options. We tell her it looks great for 10 friendship points. She asks us what we want to do now, and we can say anything since they have no impact on friendship, but of course we make our move and kiss her and maybe even a bit more after she turns those lights off. After this, we give out gifts to Emily, Haley, Vincent, Shane, Jazz, and Leia, then attempt to find Penny in her new home, but find disappointment with Pam instead. This is Pam's Nine Heart event, which is activated in her home at least four days after the first community upgrade is completed. Pam explains that she has been drinking still despite the new house, although I'm not really sure why she'd expect the new house to change her habits, but she did buy a shrine of Yoba, and it is very important we tell her we're glad she's hopeful, because if we choose the other option, saying Yoba isn't real, we would lose 1000 friendship points with Pan, which is 4 whole hearts, so be careful if you come across this cutscene. Unfortunately, neither Penny nor Pam were home to give gifts to, so we move to the next house where we find George surrounded by a bunch of wrapped up leeks. This is the cutscene we get after completing Evelyn's gifts for George special order, and after this we give both George and Evelyn a gift. Next we give gifts to Gus and Harvey, then enter Pierre's store where we get yet another cutscene being Dr. Harvey's Six Heart event which is activated in the store between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Harvey is participating in some dance aerobics with the ladies and is for some reason embarrassed when he sees us. We promise not to tell anyone for 20 friendship points, although I still don't see why he's so embarrassed. 
Now that we're at the store, we can buy some summer seeds to plant today. Of course, the majority of what we plant will be star fruit seeds, but I'd also like to plant a bit of all the other crops, so I buy a fair amount of each. We make our way to the carpenter shop and give a gift to Abigail and Demetrius along the way, then find Linus bathing in the mountain lake, and this is the cutscene we get after completing his community cleanup special order. We talk to Robin and decide to do a little painting to spice up the farm a bit, and I tried to make the jade shed have crystallarium and jade colors, and then I just like the color green for the house, but I might play around with some different colors a bit later. We purchase a shed upgrade, and this will be our final shed upgrade for the time being. We now have six deluxe sheds on the farm, one for jades, two for kegs, and three for starfruit pots. We give Sebastian a void egg and work back to the farm at around 12.30pm, which should leave us enough time to plant all of our summer seeds. We get our inventory organized and start by planting 17 radish seeds at the top of our field since this space is not covered by the Dunamo huts. I'll be planting non-regrowable crops here like the radishes, flowers, and red cabbage. Again, I just want a few of these crops in case we need some for the cooking every recipe goal. We also plant some hot peppers, tomatoes, and blueberries, and these are nice to have in range of the Junimo huts since they are crops that grow back, so we won't have to replant them and can just leave them to be for the whole season. I tried to make use of the enrichers to plant fertilizer at the same time as I plant seeds, although it is a bit difficult to move from sprinkler to sprinkler, so I'm not sure if this method is actually faster than just laying down fertilizer first and then planting seeds. I'm using quality fertilizer for blueberries since speed grow will not result in an extra harvest, but for tomatoes and hot peppers I am using deluxe speed grow since it will give us one extra harvest. You may notice all of the land is already tilled and watered since we planted parsnip seeds on the last day of spring, and the parsnip crops did end up dying, so we must scythe the dead crops, but this is much, much faster than re-hoeing and watering the land, so it ends up saving us a whole bunch of time and actually makes it possible to plant the amount of seeds we will plant today since hoeing and watering would take up way too much time. We'll also plant some corn, which will continue to grow in fall, and the deluxe speed grow will give us one extra harvest, and then we'll, after that we'll plant some hops and we can get two extra harvests with the deluxe speed grow. After all the regrowables are planted, we plant some melons in some space without sprinklers in the way, so maybe we can get some giant melons just for fun. Again, we only need a few of all the other summer crops besides starfruit, and definitely won't need the amount of crops we are planting, but I think it looks nice to have a bit of variety on the field. We do use Deluxe Speed Grow with the melons since they do not grow back, and it allows us to fit more or different harvests in the same space. That just about does it for the other summer seeds. Now we can start planting the most important money maker, the starfruit seeds. These must be planted with Deluxe Speed Grow in order to fit three harvests in summer as opposed to just two. We're likely going to end up with more starfruit than we can fit in our kegs, but we'll try to keep expanding our keg empire as much as possible to keep up with all the starfruit we are growing. Most likely, before the end of summer, we'll have enough starfruit crops and starfruit wine to sell for 12 million G, which will be enough for the gold clock and obelisk for perfection. We'll just need to make sure to sell everything on a day, which we won't need to plant seed since we'll be switching to the artisan profession for a day. And of course, along with all the starfruit, we still have a large field of coffee beans, which the Junimos will continue to harvest throughout summer, and we may try to turn some of these beans into coffee for extra profit, but of course it takes some time to do that, so we may end up selling the beans straight up. Most likely we'll just sell the gold and silver star ones and try to keg the normal ones. We finish planting starfruit seeds in the lower left field, which ends up taking quite a bit of time since it's a bit more difficult to navigate around the quality sprinklers as opposed to the larger range iridium sprinklers. After this, we head up to the top left field with very little time left in the day, but I'm determined to fill this field with starfruit seeds before we pass out. I unfortunately run out of deluxe speed growth, but I'm able to craft some more, although it is really a waste to craft since it requires precious oak resin, which should be going towards more kegs but I'd rather just finish the starfruit field so it looks nice and complete. And we are able to plant seeds in the remaining space just before the end of the day. We pass out and are met with our first crop fairy event, which has a very small chance to occur each night, and a fairy comes and fully grows some of our crops, although I'll probably ignore the grown starfruit since I want them to line up with the others. 
We move on to summer day two, which is a good humor luck day. There isn't much required of us today. We still need to finish the Keys Kindness Challenge, but I'd rather do this tomorrow on day three, since our starfruit wine kegs will be done and ready to be cycled then, so it'll be more efficient to give out gifts tomorrow, since we'll already be going around town and using up time with that. We do need to take care of some farm chores first, including machine cycling and harvesting the greenhouse and cave mushrooms, and we also pet the animals, but notice they are unhappy which means they ran out of food. We do have quite a large amount of hay saved in our chest from when we had wheat harvests last year, so I grabbed some of that and throw it into the auto feeder. We do want to make sure we have good friendship with our ducks mainly to get high quality duck feathers to give to Leo. After the farm chores, we can take advantage of the good luck day by going to the dangerous mines and try to grind for some radioactive ore, and hopefully, just maybe if we get lucky, I'd like to get one more galaxy soul so we can finally upgrade our galaxy hammer to the infinity gavel. We spend quite a bit of time in the mines, but are getting pretty lucky with radioactive ore nodes. Unfortunately, it seems we only get two to three ore per node, and even though we are getting more nodes than usual, it still is not an insane amount. We end up getting over 50 radioactive ore, which is pretty good for radioactive ore considering how rare it is, but if we wanted to use it for something like hyper speed growth, we would need much much more if we plan to use it on the farm or island farm. And I would actually not recommend using hyper speed grow on the regular farm due to its expensive cost and the fact that fertilizer will disappear on the regular farm due to season change. It would be much more worth it to use hyper speed grow on the island farm since we could plant crops there during any season and I believe the fertilizers do not disappear on the island, although I could be wrong. The problem with using hyper speed grow on the island is we would need over 600 radioactive ore to fill our field which might take a while to gather. What we can actually do very soon is use Hyper Speed Grow in the greenhouse. Our greenhouse is overdue for a remodel, since we don't really need the coffee beans that are in there and we have enough ancient fruit now as well. We'll only need 119 radioactive ore for 119 Hyper Speed Grow to fill the greenhouse, and we'll also grab some pressure nozzles to make it as space efficient as possible. We'll most likely grow more starfruit in the greenhouse for maximum profit, but we can also grow whatever other non regrowable crop we want there too. We continue our grind in the mines all the way till 7pm and we find another large group of mushrooms to slay and get super lucky with a galaxy soul. I wish I knew what the drop chance for these were, but unfortunately I can't find anything about it on the wiki. All I know is that the chance must be super small, but using the burglar's ring on a very good luck day must help a lot and using a monster musk with slaying the mushrooms is probably the best bet since we can slay a very large amount of the mushrooms in very little time. We now have the last galaxy soul for the hammer, so we warp back to the farm and get our stuff organized. We'll prepare to travel to Ginger Island to get the hammer upgraded right away, cause why wait? We grab the other two galaxy souls from our chests for a total of three, and I bring along enough cinder shards as well. We'll need 20 cinder shards per galaxy soul for a total of 60. I also bring the axe because I want to change its enchantment to shaving for the extra wood as opposed to its current enchantment swift. We warp to the beach and travel to Ginger Island and start to head north, and happen to see Leo along the way so we give him an iridium quality duck feather. This doesn't quite put us at six arts with him, but we should be there very soon and then can get him to move to the valley soon. We make a quick stop at the dig site to collect some bone shards and head up to the volcano and up to the forge where we start forging our galaxy hammer with the galaxy souls. We have to do this three times and then it turns into the infinity gavel which has a noticeable increase in damage output. Also note that the gem modifiers are not lost and we still have the increased speed and damage from them which is nice. We'll be able to test out the new hammer in the volcano soon, but first I want to re-enchant the axe with shaving, and I am using Mousy Pound's predictor tool to see that shaving is the next enchantment in line, but for some reason we get the powerful enchantment. What I did not realize is that forging a weapon with galaxy souls actually counts as iterations in the enchantment predictor, even though we're not technically enchanting it. So if you do happen to be forging galaxy souls and enchanting tools at the same time, just make sure you skip over a row every time you forge a weapon with a soul. It's not too big of a deal, we'll just come back another day and get the shaving enchantment on the axe then. For now, let's have some fun with the new hammer in the volcano, and it does feel like there is a noticeable difference in damage. 
It seems like we can reliably slay the lava lurkers in one smash spam attack, and the tiger slimes and magma spirits also seem to be slayed pretty quick as well. Unfortunately, we cannot get much further than floor 1 in the volcano tonight, since I forgot my watering can, but oh well, we'll have some more fun with the infinity gavel next time. We warp back to the farm and I spend the remaining time in the day tending to some more farm chores and I also decide to craft some random items to make progress towards the craft everything perfection goal. This does bring us to the end of this day and the end of this video. Next time, we'll finish up Key's kindness once again and cycle another round of starfruit wine. We were finally able to obtain the infinity gavel, which should help out a bunch in Skull Cavern Dives, and we'll be able to try that out next time. We're continuing to make fast progress towards perfection, and if you are interested in seeing future videos and what else is to come, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see them when they come out. And I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment, it helps me out a whole bunch, and I really enjoy reading and responding to all of your comments. Also feel free to ask any questions you may have, or perhaps let me know what you'd like to see in the future. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye.